I'm Joey, and these are brisket stuffed, bacon wrapped, jalapeno poppers that we're cooking on that solo stove convection grill. So follow me and let's turn up the tasty. All right, so last night, me and the fam went out to a local barbecue restaurant. We just ordered a little bit too much. So I have this leftover brisket. Wondering, what can I do with this? And I had an idea. Today, we're gonna make a riff on that classic jalapeno popper. The first thing we need to do is cut open these jalapenos. I say jalapenos, maybe you say jalapeno. There's a couple different ways you can do this. You can cut off the top right here. I actually like the aesthetics of that stem on there, but it all starts the same way. We're just gonna go ahead and cut it right down the middle and get those seeds out of there. That's where all the spice hides. This is what they look like when they're totally cored out. You can see they're like a little boat for deliciousness. As you cut these, as you remove the cores, be careful, you could get a little juice in the eyes I just did. Next up, we have some brisket here that we're just gonna go ahead and get this diced up. Grab a little bite of that. Mmm, man, that's good. So I'm not talking about set amounts here. If I had leftover pulled pork, I would use pulled pork. If I had chorizo, I would use that. I could use anything, I mean, be creative. This is just something I'm using from a leftover meal. So right here, we have about a cup, I would say a cup of uh, chopped brisket. We're gonna go ahead and get that in with the eight ounces of cream cheese. Next, I have two tablespoons of scallions. Those go great with cream cheese. And then we have about a uh, quarter cup, I'd say, of uh, what I'd call Mexican cheese. So we're just gonna go ahead and get that in there with some of this grunt rub right here from my friends at Code 3 Spices. Look, this is not a paid post. I'm friends with these guys and I, I really just truly enjoy some of the rubs. I let that cream cheese sit out a little bit so it should be nice and soft. It's a little chilly out here and I think it kind of cooled down a little bit, but we're just gonna go ahead and mix this. You can throw it into a food processor. I'm just gonna go ahead and mix this until it's all, you know, mixed up, basically. I gave up on the spoons. This cheese I'd let out, I'd let it soften up, came out here, it got a little cold, so I'm just getting dirty, get my hands in there and get this all mixed up. It's kind of like a meat Play-Doh when you think about it. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I would have liked to have played with a meat Play-Doh when I was a kid. We grew up too poor for meat Play-Doh, I guess. Oh man, that's still, dude, it's too chilly out here. So while I'm stuffing these, I just want to mention that that grunt rub has a nice garlic profile that I think is going to complement the peppers and the meat really well. Now that's what I'm using, but if you have a favorite barbecue rub that you use at home, it won't taste as good probably as the grunt rub from Code 3 Spices, but <laughs> it will get the job done. I've used a lot of different things, even just something as simple as salt and pepper. We've really done the hardest part. We've got the mixture made and stuffed. I have a little bit of leftover. I could go cut some more jalapenos, but I'm actually gonna use that on some crackers later today. So now it's time to wrap these up in a little blanket of bacon. We're gonna take this piece right here. You can always cut the bacon if you find it's gonna be too much. But really, is there ever such a thing as too much bacon? And take a look at that right there. I try to end that fold right there on the bottom. I start here at the top and that will keep it together as we grill. For those of you at home who don't know this, Bacon is actually the duct tape of the kitchen. If that just comes over a little bit, what I'll do is I'll take it and I'll just kind of push it underneath that previous slice to hold it together. Also remember, one of my favorite parts about bacon is the crispiness. As you can see, I'm overlapping there a little bit. That will help hold it together, but you really don't want to overlap too much because that bacon on the inside, it's just not going to get crispy. Now that we have these stuffed and ready to go, I'm gonna take them over and show you my new grill. Follow me. This is a new grill, the Solo Stove Grill. You may have seen the Solo Stove. It's actually a fire pit. They just created this convection grill. And man, is it really neat. I got a couple cooks under my belt. That convection will allow this bacon to get really crispy and I shouldn't have to flip these. But I've never actually tried to cook poppers on this grill, so you're joining the ride with me. Let's see how it turns out. What we've done here is we've created a two zone heat system with the coals on one side and the food on the other. We did that because we don't wanna put the bacon directly over the heat. It's a really fatty meat. So when that fat drips down, it's gonna cause a flare up and cause that bacon to burn. And that is no bueno. We just went through all that work. So we don't wanna mess it up here. We want them over indirect heat. So I'm gonna throw this lid on and we're gonna see how long these take to cook. Also while these are cooking, I just wanna take a moment to thank my friends at into the AM for sending me this awesome shirt. 
and other ones. Really super comfortable. If you want to check it out, we've included a link in the description below. All right, guys, these have been cooking for about seven minutes now. Let's see how they look. Wow, look at that bacon. Can you see that at home? That's super crispy right on top. In seven minutes, that fire is really going, man. I think we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put this down, and I think we're gonna go ahead and pull these off in about mm, two, maybe three more minutes. bottom of this bacon is not burnt. That's nice and crispy. Look at that. Oh man. Now it's time for my favorite part, the taste test. All right guys, so these jalapeno poppers are done. Now the most remarkable thing was it only took 10 minutes on that convection grill. Man, I'm really impressed by that. Someone asked, well, how long would it have taken if we threw it in the air fryer? I think it probably would have taken about 15 or 20 minutes based upon the fact that that grill was ripping hot. I'd have to say about 500 degrees. If I had to guess, my air fryer only gets up to 400 degrees. Let's go ahead and cut them open, see how they look. Look at that. You can still see the cream cheese right inside. I can feel that bacon is very crispy and... Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. You get the crispiness of that bacon. The fat that's in the bacon, of course. As we've said before, the fat is where it's at. That's where meat in general gets a lot of its flavor. But then you're taking right into that delicious cheese and you get the nice texture profile of the brisket that's inside, all wrapped up in what's now a very soft jalapeno pepper. It's not super spicy. It has a little bit of kick to it, but by removing that membrane, by removing those seeds, you really help reduce that spice. Of course, if you like a spicier popper, well, then you can go ahead and leave those in, but man. Wow. This was the first time, but it won't be the last time. Also, if you try this recipe at home, please visit us again and let us know how they turned out for you in the comments below. Also, as I mentioned earlier, if you're looking to buy one of these solo stoves for yourself, we've included a link in the description below. I'm gonna get back to eating and I'll see you guys soon.